our final video from chapter 10, 10.6 lattice structures is one of those sections where you don't really need to worry about every single thing that's described within the section. Okay, there's really just a couple of key ideas that I want you to pull out of here. Okay. And what 10.6 is about is continuing on with the discussion of crystalline solids right, and looking at the types of repeating patterns that we see. Okay. Because right, if you even think about something as simple as putting a bunch of balls together or stacking blocks, um, you can probably come up with the idea that there are more efficient ways to do that or less efficient ways, right? Depending on how everything comes together. Right? And atoms, ions, molecules are doing the same type of thing, right? They wanna maximize right, the attractive interactions between them and minimize the intermolecular energy, right? Anything where they're repelling one another. Because all of chemistry is about reaching the minimum in energy. Right? And we describe the way that those things pack to maximize those interactions for crystalline solids in terms of a unit cell. Okay? Not looking at the bulk structure overall, but whatever the simplest repeating unit of a crystalline solid is, right? So is it ABAB, for example? Is it ABC, ABC, something else? Right? What's the simplest pattern that we can get out of there? And, and identifying the unit cells is the big takeaway from this section, looking at a unit cell and identifying what kind it is. And this is what a basic unit cell looks like. We describe unit cells, you see it's the simplest repeating unit of this big overall structure. We describe them by what are known as lattice points. And these lattice points represent atoms or ions that are packing with one another. And this is called a simple cubic unit cell. Okay. And you can kind of figure it out right from the name, right? It's just a simple cube. Eight corners on that cube, simple cube, nothing else going on. That's a simple cubic unit cell. Okay. Here is another representation of the same thing. Okay. But, you know, going back to what I mentioned before, if you dump out a bunch of, you know, say tennis balls into a bucket, right, putting them directly on top of one another like that is not the most efficient way for uh, spherical objects to pack with one another. It only takes up 52% of the volume because okay? everything's in layers. And packing can affect what's known as the coordination number, okay? which is another key idea to have right now. Again, we'll talk about this later on in chapter 19, time dependent. Uh, but be familiar with the idea of a coordination number. Right, for one of those lattice points, being an atom or an ion, right, how many things is it directly coordinated to? Okay. And in this case, for a simple cubic unit cell, it's six. Right? One behind, one in front, one to the right, one to the left, one on top, and one below. It's a coordination number of six. And that can change depending on how the unit cell changes. So if we want something to pack more efficiently, then maybe we increase the coordination number. And these are the other two types of unit cells that I'd like you to know from 10.6. So there's simple cubic and then these two, body-centered cubic or face-centered cubic. What a body-centered cubic unit cell does is it takes a simple cubic unit cell puts atoms or ions at all of the corners, but then it puts an extra atom or ion in the middle of the cube. And that increases the coordination number to eight. That takes up 68% of the available space, which is more efficient than the 52% that we see with a simple cubic unit cell. And then a face-centered cubic cell that puts atoms again at all of the corners of a cube, and then one in the middle of each of the faces of the cube, keeping in mind that there are six faces of the cube. So that gives us a coordination number of 12. That's 74% of the usable space. And that's actually the most efficient that spheres are able to pack with one another. You can never get 100%. And okay, so face-centered cubic, 74%, that's also called cubic close packing because it's as close as those spheres can get to one another. 
So let's see what those look like on slide 72 here. Okay. This is probably the key slide to know from this section. Okay. Be able to look at a unit cell, any one of these, and tell me what it is. Is it simple cubic? Is it body centered or is it face centered? Again, simple cubic, just the cube. Body centered, an extra atom shown there in red, right in the middle. Okay. Face centered, you drop that one out of the middle. Notice it's not here in the middle for this one. But then you add one on the middle of each face. So here's the right face, here's the forward face, the left face, right, the back face shown right there, the top and the bottom. Six faces to a cube and you've got one on each of the faces. That's face centered cubic. Okay. And here's a, another structure. Right, showing the body centered. Here's what those atoms or ions actually look like. Okay. And keeping in mind, it's the simplest repeating unit. So those things on the corner, for example, belong to eight different cubes because we're thinking about these things in 3D. Okay. But this shows you how they can pack within that individual cube. Nothing to worry about as much here from slide 73 or slide 74 that's showing us the same thing now for a face-centered cubic structure. Right now on the faces, they belong to two different cubes. Okay. But just be able to look at this, either one of these, right, and tell me what kind of structure it is. You've got to know simple cubic, body-centered cubic, and face-centered cubic. Okay. And as I mentioned, face-centered cubic is the most efficient that these things can pack. And when we pack the spheres on top of one another, they can pack in one of two ways. It's known as cubic close packing or hexagonal close packing. Both are equally as efficient as one another. Yeah. The difference is for hexagonal close pack, it goes one, two, one, two, and then onward and upward, right? One, two, one, two, one, two. Cubic close pack does three different layers. One, two, three, then one, two, three, one, two, three. So just be aware of the difference of those, right? Cubic close pack and hexagonal close pack. Vocab words, both the most efficient way you can pack spheres. But we've been making the assumption, right, that our cube lengths are the same size, right? A, B, and C here, right? We have a perfect cube where those three distances are all the same. We've also been assuming that the angles, right, alpha, beta, and gamma here are all equal to 90 degrees. But that's not always the case, right? You can change A, B, or C, or alpha, beta, or gamma. Those six factors define a unit cell. And if you start changing them up, right, you can actually get a lot more different types of unit cells, which are all different ways that solids can bond with one another. There's 14 total, okay, kind of shown right here. Okay. So what we've done is just look at this row right here, okay? where a is equal to B is equal to C, alpha, beta, and gamma are all 90 degrees. And so those are the three you have to know. Right? And that's why you don't have to stress out about everything that's included in this chapter, right? Or this section, because there's a whole bunch of other stuff that could be introduced, but we're just worried with knowing these three basic ways that solids can pack and looking at those pictures and identifying which one is going on. Yep. As I alluded to in the previous video, uh, be aware of the fact that cations and anions aren't the same size. Okay? Anions are larger. Right? So if we're forming an ionic solid and we're looking at these unit cells, anions are the one that pack together to form the unit cell, something simple cubic or body centered or face centered. Then the cations come in and fill the holes between the spheres depending on their size. And depending on the ratio that we have, right, is it a one-to-one -one cation to anion? Is it one-to-two, something like that? They can fill two different types of holes, something known as a tetrahedral hole between four or an octahedral hole between six. And that's what this looks like right here. Here's some tetrahedral holes, octahedral holes, or just a simple cubic hole. So I'm not worried as much right now about you knowing the different types of holes that cations fill, just again, the different types of unit cells and the fact that anions are larger, right? So they're responsible for actually forming these structures and then the cations go in between. 
This information, in case you're curious, was all discovered by a process known as X-ray crystallography. Okay. Some famous women scientists that were responsible for this, Dorothy Hodgkin, Kathleen Lonsdale. And we'll talk about this more if you continue on into organic using X-ray crystallography. It's a heck of a lot of math to look at what's known as an X-ray diffraction pattern. And that can actually tell you the structure of crystalline materials for which the X-ray beam is shot through. So lots of information that's available here in 10.6. Again, don't stress out about knowing every single detail that's introduced in this section. Know the three types of unit cells we talked about, right? Simple cubic, body-centered, and face-centered. Know what a unit cell is right? and be able to look at a picture and identify what type of unit cell we have and knowing that face-centered cubic is the most efficient way we can pack these things together, be it hexagonal or cubic close packing.